Okay, we're going to continue. In the 13th book of Israel, Pure, Fine Gold, Part 2. And we're going to be starting on chapter 13. All right, that is found on page 131. The title of it is Pope Francis uh, and his G8 uh, are preparing for war against all holiness. All right? Said Pope Francis and the G8 is preparing uh, for war against all form of holiness. And when we look at the news, we definitely are seeing exactly, you know, these things taking place. All forms of holiness that... Pope Francis is coming against. When we look and see the crusade that is taking place right now, destroying anyone who have any form of the teaching that comes from Abraham. Right? But the house of Yahweh, you know, Yahweh said, well, look, this last day's work, Yahweh is going to protect this last day's work because this last day's work is very, very, very important to, to the completing of Yahweh's plan. All right, so we're going to take off. We start off in a pastor saying, you know, as usual, shalom, everyone. And he say, may the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. In verse 2, he say, he say that uh, we are seeing the world going down, and definitely we are seeing the world going down. All right, say, Babylon has fallen. That great, that's great news uh, for Yahweh's kingdom. Uh, with uh, which was planned from the beginning. Uh, and uh, from the beginning, Yahweh offered salvation. And this word offer means a proposal. Right? This offer means a proposal. Uh, this, uh, you know, he said, this is the way. Walk in it. Right? This is what all the prophets and apostles was teaching. He said, this is the way of Yahweh. Walk in it. Right, and in Deuteronomy, Yahweh said, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. He said, choose. Right, he said, choose. We have to make that choice. You know, everything is choices that we make. Yahweh is not going to hold us and drag us, you know, to keep his laws. We are a free moral agent. Right, free moral agent to choose righteousness. And still with all of that, Yahweh still... You know, he came back and said, choose life. And the only way someone could, 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 could choose life is by living by the laws of Yahweh. There's no other way. No other form. But he said, from the beginning, Yahweh offered uh, his salvation. Now, in Matitia, in Matitia chapter, chapter um, 3, verses 1 and 2, Yachanan said, Repent for the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. So what, what he's showing us there, every time, every time the prophet and they came forward and they said the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand, that was the opportunity that these people were getting to enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Right? Salvation was being offered to them at that time. Right? And this is what Yaknan and Yahshua Messiah came preaching. All, a matter of fact, all the, the prophet and the apostles, this is the same message from the beginning. I right, say, repent, for the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. Now, Pastor, Pastor had mentioned about salvation because, because what we're looking at is that Pastor said that Yahweh offered them salvation. Right? Salvation was offered to them. But Pastor said in the 13th book of Israel, part 1, chapter 9, verse 10, he said, there has never been any salvation given except to Yahshua. Right? Now, remember what Pastor said, said here. He offered salvation. Right? It's something that is offered. And he's saying in the 13th book of Israel, part 1, he said, There has never been any salvation given except to Yahshua. And that is certain. But it's not real, it's not real yet. Uh, and of course, Scripture show you, Scripture showed you yourself, uh, and uh, Scripture show you yourself uh, are going to bring or gather 
or rather we are going uh, to finish the work uh, that's bringing in salvation. So he said we are the group. We are the group. This last group is the one that is actually bringing salvation. All the rest was offer salvation, but we are the one that's bringing salvation. Right? That's how important this work really is. And you know, it has certain things. It has things that was offered to us and wasn't offered to Yahshua. Anyone realize that? It has a certain thing that is offered to us in these last days that wasn't offered to Yahshua. Right? And though it have individual who is sitting here will be part of that. Anyone, anyone have an idea what I'm speaking about? Anyone have an idea? In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, speak about it. 1 Corinthians 15. Anyone have an idea what it is I'm speaking about? And this has been offered to us. Right? That wasn't offered to Yahshua. This, is, this has been offered to us. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, where it said, Behold, I show you a, a great behold, I show you a great a great truth. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So 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 what is saying here that not all of us will go to sleep. This last era here. Some of us will remain right true and actually witness every single thing, the coming of Yahshua, every single thing. This has been promised to us here in these last days. Right? That wasn't promised to Yahshua. You remember Yahshua had, Yahshua went to sleep three days and three nights and was resurrected. Well, this, this has been offered to us. You see, not all of us will go to sleep. Some of us will remain and actually witness every single thing that is taking place. That is just one portion of the blessing that comes from Yahweh. And that is something that, that is something, you know, we have to actually strive constantly, you know, to be part of. Right? Not ever going to sleep. Now, every time the house of Yahweh was established, salvation was offered. Uh, but uh, we are the ones that is, you know, actually bringing in that plan of Yahweh. Let's, let's just go over to... Um, the page 132. Well, say, Pastor, because Pastor continued to, continue to speak about Pope, Pope Francis here, and he's going to um, consecrate Mary in order to, to his congregation and so on. But over in verse 8, Pastor go, goes on to say, say, Pope Francis signal, well, we have got to remember now these people were brilliant at one time. They had Yahweh's knowledge, a great deal of it, but of course, they rejected it. Uh, and they didn't want to live by Yahweh's laws. So the biggest majority started uh, turning against that way, speaking about turning against the laws of Yahweh. The elders uh, were led, the elders were leading them. Uh, you saw what occurred uh, with Samuel when the elders turned against him. And of course, Elia said, Baal have thousands of candidates. Uh, and I only, uh, you only have one worshiper here. That's me. Uh, and uh, they are all against me, he said. Well, that's the way it is today. Of course, when a person like myself say we are going to win, uh, people don't believe uh, that, uh, but uh, we have Yahweh's prophecies. Uh, and Yahweh is the one who have the plan. Uh, and everything thus far, or all of this, all of his prophecies leading up to this time period, including the increase of the increase in knowledge, the nuclear bomb, uh, and of course things that are occurring, and to pro- that things that are things that are according to prophecies, not one. He said, not one of these prophecies have failed. Right? He said, not one of these prophecies 
have failed. Now, if you look, if you look, for instance, the prophet Daniel, how many prophecies that Daniel wrote about and how much of them actually took place? Right? How many of Daniel's prophecy actually took place? Every single one. You know, they classify Daniel as what, a minor prophet? Yeah, he, he, was, a, he, he, was, a, 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 he was a youth. But he was very intelligent in the laws of Yahweh, in the laws and prophecies. But Daniel, Daniel foretold, foretold of the four beasts. Right? Starting with Babylon. First, he prophesied about, is what, five, five governments? How much he, he, he had prophesied about? Four or five, four or five governments. How many? Four? <laughs> That's right, it's five, not four. He, he prophesied about four beasts, beastly system. But he also mentioned the government of Yahweh. That will take over. So basically, he mentioned the four beasts and plus one that is going to take over that four beasts. Right, which is the kingdom of Yahweh. So it basically is five government, four BC system, but five government. And the final thing, Daniel, I think Daniel 7. I spoke about. So 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 the, the whole thing about it, if we can fully see or recognize that all these prophecies are coming to pass, what about the prophecies that haven't taken place as yet? Should we just don't believe it? You know, why, why do we believe the scripture? Why do we believe the book of Yahweh? It's because the laws and the prophecies. How can someone prove that Yahweh exists? It's through the laws and prophecies. Why? Right? Because it's really amazing for someone to tell you something thousands of years in advance, and one and behold, it actually takes place right in front of our eyes. Right? That is definite proof that Yahweh exists. Definite proof. If, if you were to ask... You know, a Christian, well, show me how the Creator exists. What can they say? They can't say anything. Because the laws and prophecies is the strength of Yahweh. But all these prophecies, you know, will come to pass. Not one, because this is what, this is what Moshe said. Not Moshe, but um, King, King, Dave, King, Sam, King um, Solomon. Well, let's just look at it real fast in page 283. All right, Solomon even made, made a comment like that because Moshe, Moshe had prophesied. Remember, Moshe was sure the whole, the complete plan of Yahweh. Right? But in verse, First Kings 8, if you look at verse 44, um, 54, he said, When Solomon had finished prayed, praying, or all these prayers and supplication to Yahweh, he re- Raised his, ha- his supplication to Yahweh. He rose from in front of the altar of Yahweh, uh, from kneeling uh, on his knees, uh, or with his hands spread up uh, to heaven. Uh, then he stood uh, and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be Yahweh, who uh, have given rest uh, to his people Israel, uh, just uh, uh, as he have promised. Uh, not one would have a field of all the righteous promise. He said, not one would have failed from Yahweh's righteous promise. Uh, he promised through Moshe, through his servant Moshe. So you see, all the prophecies, all the prophecies, even, even King Solomon testified to that. He said, not one would fail. Not one would. So it's everything that pastor is showing us in prophecies, it will come to pass. We have to believe that. Because, you know, this is the strength of Yahweh. We have to believe these things. So we continue, continue in verse, verse 13. He said, you can tell, you know, in America, they're pretty well controlled in America. Speaking about the um, Catholic Church, the Catholic Church and the G8. He said, you can tell, you know, in America, they're pretty 
well control America. Someone uh, said uh, you can't, uh, it's hard to find a non Catholic school anymore because the Catholic, the, the school that they own, you know, that's obvious. The ones they don't own but they run, that's obvious too. Think about it. When the Pope say this is going to be a holiday uh, from now on, uh, do, you hear, do you hear any politician griping about it or, or objecting to it? He pretty much say oh, what goes on uh, in the United States. And of course, the only thing uh, that Yahweh doesn't give him control over is the house of Yahweh. So Yahweh set, he said, Yahweh set the limit. And this is, what, this is what we have to remember. This, this is what, it said, Yahweh set the limits. Right? It said, Yahweh set the limits, uh, and, he, and you can trust in that. Uh, that Yahweh is guiding uh, this thing. He's going to bring it through totally, his plan. His plan in Genesis 1.26. And we know what the plan of Yahweh is in Genesis 1.26, is to make man in Yahweh's image and his likeness. And it's only in the house of Yahweh someone could come and keep the laws of Yahweh to be formed in Yahweh's image and likeness. Now, a key thing what we have to remember also, to be part, to become like Yahweh in Yahweh's image and likeness, we have to allow Yahweh to work with us. That's the key thing. We have to allow Yahweh to work with us. Because, because it, it shows example where individual didn't even want Yahweh to work with them. When the priest was given that individual instruction, that individual was total rebelling against those instructions. And we see that, we see that, you know, in, in Samuel. When Samuel went, went to Saul, and he told him, well, look, he gave him instruction, telling him, well, look, when you go, Destroy everything. Don't bring back any animal, anything whatsoever. And what he did, he rebelled against the priests. Right? And you know, as, as mentioned, this, this wasn't just an overnight occasion. Because he had to be getting constant counseling and all these type of, you know, all these type of things. It's the same thing that is taking place in the house of Yari right now, took place with these men. They had to get counseling. He had to get counseling and over and over, he had to be warned and what he did, he rebelled still. Right? He still rebelled. So, so we have to allow Yahweh to work with us, in us and with us. And the only way that could occur is humbling ourselves to the teaching that comes from the house of Yahweh. Right? That is the only way Yahweh could actually work with an individual. When one humble himself to Yahweh and listen to the instruction and try the utmost best to carry it out, that individual is striving. I'm not saying that individual is not going to make mistakes. Yes, he's going to make mistakes. But what he does after he makes that mistake, you know, is he going to find himself in a hole and just say, okay, well, I'm in this hole already. I'm not going to even try to get out of this hole. Yahweh created every single avenue. Everything that we could think about, Yahweh have a way to escape. And when I say a means of escape, we're talking about Turning from that particular sin and turning to Yahweh. This is why he set up, he set up things like, like, like confession. Right? That is one of the key things, confession. He said, who, he who don't confess his sin will not be what? Will not be forgiven. So this is just one of the ways that Yahweh set up so we can constantly, constantly be coming before Yahweh. You know, through the priests, through Israel Hawkins, through Yahshua. You know, but, but we have to, allow, we have to all, allow Yahweh to work with every individual, you know, with us. We have to humble ourselves before Yahweh. And this, that is the only way that someone could really qualify for the kingdom of Yahweh. Over in verse 17, he said, well, in spite of the 6,000 years. And you know, as I was reading this, I remember in class workshop we are talking about the same six thousand years and what the feast of tabernacles represent right and every day in the feast of tabernacles it have a representation 
for every single day. And I was trying to remember what book it came from. Well, this is the book. This is the book that Pastor, Pastor have it in. Right? The beginning of the end. Let me just, let me just give you a, a slight idea exactly. This part of it here. Right? You see, you have the Day of Atonement. You start off with the Day of Atonement, but he's showing you every single feast have a representation. Right? He went over the Feast of Tabernacles. There, there is where he started with, with the 6,000 years. He said, it is revealed uh, in many scriptures that the number six are often referred to mankind's number. Uh, six days of each week uh, are given to man, uh, but the seventh day was made holy to Yahweh. And he gave you, gave you a certain scripture, Exodus 20, 9 and 10. He, he went on to say further, he says, six years was given for mankind to harvest the fields he had planted, but the seventh year was the was a Sabbath year of rest. Give you the scriptures. Exodus 23, 23, 10 and 11. He went on to say, Yahweh then ordained his jubilee year when, when men uh, are to be loose, when men are to loose uh, the, their hold on their fellow brothers. Seven times seven years are numbered. Then the jubilee year is the 50th year. Give you the scripture. Then he went on he started with the Feast of Tabernacles, the six days, right? The Feast of Tabernacles, first six days, a man, 6,000 years. So we see the first six days of the Feast of Tabernacles represent the 6,000 years of mankind. Pastor said, the first six days of the Feast of Tabernacles picture Yahweh allowing mankind 6,000 years of government of the people and by the people against Yahweh. So that, that, that is the first six days. Right, which represents 6,000 years. He said, the Feast of Tabernacles, the seventh day, Yahweh, 1,000 years. He said, this is what the seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles represents. Uh, a 1,000 year range of peace upon earth uh, with the saints uh, as the 144,000 priesthood under Yahshua uh, in the kingdom of Yahweh. Right, and he went on to the last great day. They say the meaning of the last great day. Uh, uh, we will see that the eighth day picture, the great white throne judgment of mankind. So you see, everything was laid out. Right? What the Feast of Tab Tabernacles represent every single day have a significant meaning behind of it. Right? So Pastor goes, goes on to say in verse 17, he said, well, in spite of the 6,000 years of Satan deception, and man, man scheme uh, to be gods like the serpent. Yahweh's plan will be fulfilled. So you see, no matter what, Yahweh, what we have to understand, Yahweh is the one that is in control of his plan. His authority will be given to his saints. Saints. I would, I could show you uh, right now, uh, in just uh, a nutshell, uh, who a saint is. And we know who a saint is. A saint is one who keeps the laws of Yahweh. Right? That is a saint. That is, a saint is not one who they, they, they died and, and, you know, put us a goal. That is not a saint. A saint is one who keeps the laws of Yahweh. He said, but of course, as Joshua said, uh, in ten words or less, they are those who keep his commandments, keep Yahweh's commandments and his and have the testimony of Yahshua. And this word testimony meaning will look evidence in, in support of. Right? Evidence in support of. So coming back to the prophecies and so on. All the prophecies that, that foretold of Yahshua. Right? Yahshua fulfill, fulfill all those prophecies. Every single one. Just like in these last days, Yahshua Hawkins is fulfilling every single prophecy that the prophet spoke about him. Every single one. So there we could, we could actually see, well, look, this is the correct place. You know, people, people have a tendency, you know, when they come to the house of Yahweh, they will think, well, look, every individual that is here already, already overcome. No, we ain't all overcome. We're still, we're still trying to overcome certain things. Right? And when, when 
certain things occur, you know, our minds will go, you know, crazy. Because the first thing we'll say, well, look, this individual, you know, keeping the laws of Yahweh, say keeping the laws of Yahweh. But that, that individual is struggling to overcome certain things. And this is what we have to remember. This individual is struggling to overcome certain things. But in the whole scenario, what we have to remember, you know, as Yahshua said, blessed are the peacemaker. Right? Blessed are the peacemaker because they will be called the sons of Yahweh. So basically what it's saying here, if a conflict arises, right, you, the, the individual that is first, you know, to, 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 to find that peaceful solution, he is, you know, striving to become a son of Yahweh. It's not the one who tried to, you know, buck up and show, well, look, I, 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 I am more man than you and all that kind of foolishness. You know, it's one who tried to bring peace amongst whatever conflict, right? This is individual who's striving to be a son of Yahweh. Right, so you know all these things we have to remember, and this is what this is what King Solomon said. Psalms one nineteen, one one um, twenty nine. Yeah, I think one twenty nine. Wait, wait, wait. Speak about the tes- testimony. Say your testimonies are so wonderful. That's why we keep them Yahweh. Right, he said this is something we delight in. Right, the testimonies of Yahweh because the testimonies show exactly where look where the house is. Where the house will establish, who is going to be running the house, the, 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 the administration that Yahweh set up for people to have salvation. Right? So, all these things, you know, we have to keep in our mind. We have to keep in our mind and strive diligently, day and night, you know, to, to, to fulfill these laws of Yahweh. You know, over in verse 25, it said, All these things were allowed by Yahweh, and still he said, uh, In the last days I will establish my house. Uh, and it uh, will bring forth uh, my laws, uh, and they will learn war no more. He said, they will learn war no more. And we will all, you know, this, we have a saying, you know, it bigger, it's always bigger in Texas. So our mind will say that they will learn war no more. Meaning, well, look, we will think, well, look, we will teach, you know, nations and all that type of stuff, the peace you know, to, to, to have peace. But, you know, the Apostle Shah will even make it even smaller than that, right? Because he said they will learn war no more. Even when we come to the house of Yahweh, right? Because the Apostle Shah said he, find, he found two, wars, two members waging war. He's speaking about the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. But it could go even deeper than that, even with the microorganism, because what we are learning is true way of life, right, which is taught in the house of Yahweh, right? When, when Yahweh is teaching us the clean and unclean food, when we eat something unclean, what occur? It wage war. It wage wars inside of us. Even the small microorganism wage war. This is, what, this is what Pastor is saying here. They will learn war no more. So it, it, it's every single thing, what we eat, the type of lifestyle we live, right? This is what we are learning. So even inside of us, we will have that peace, right? We will have that peace. And this is something, you know, we all have to diligently, constantly strive, you know, to keep on doing, to have peace within ourselves. Because if we don't have peace in ourselves, how could we teach peace? We can't teach peace, right? So we have to practice peace and teach peace. So with this, I'd like to turn the class over, Lord, please stand, to the great Kohan Nathaniel Hawkins. Praise Yahweh, man. of Yahweh may be seated. You know, this, that war that the great Khan is speaking of, you know, is something that comes on us. You know, the, the scriptures refers to it as a the, the lust that often entraps us, uh, gets us bound up in our feelings and in our emotions, and the emotions seem oh so right, and the wrong emotions feel oh so good, and they bring forth the same condemnation and the same consequences that the gods are experiencing at this very time. Because of the lust to rise ourselves above each other to be, you know, if, if we were to say to, 
um, to each other, well, the reason why you're having a conflict is because you're trying to rise yourself up above your brother. No, 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 I love my brother. I love my brother. I, I only want, I would give my life for my brother. But just when he just rubs me, oh, Joe, he just gets me so upset. But I, I, would, I would lay down my life for him. But, you know, being that living sacrifice and laying down that life is laying down your feelings. You know, the Peaceful Solution shows us that it's an individual's values, it's an individual's likes and dislikes that gives meaning to their life or that gives, gives their life uh, enjoyment. Okay, so it's very, very necessary for us to have the right personality, the right thought pattern, okay, the, the, the right desires, the right likes and dislikes. You know, and it shows that uh, uh, a true leader will have the right character, a moral character, and he'll have the personality that will back up that moral character. Okay, so his likes and his dislikes will back up and support the right choices that he makes in his life. Okay, and sometimes the right choice is to suffer the wrong and be willing to back off, okay, to, to separate yourself from a situation. You know, but you have to also understand, too, that it's all about the intent, the intent of an individual because you could back off from a situation and you can give someone the silent treatment and say, I'm separating from you right now, and it'll still be retaliation. You know, Yahweh will still look at it as retaliation. Oh, well, I just had to take a breather. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you know, you, you know when you get to the point to where you just might say something that will just start a huge fight and so you just separate yourself. <laughs> no, it's not okay to just maybe say something. I didn't want to say something that was going to, like, start a huge fight, so I just said, you know what, I'm not talking to you for the rest of the month. You know, no, we, that's not proper, okay? If, you, if we can't control ourselves, then yes, separate. You know, if, if, if you feel as though you're going to say something that's just going to exacerbate the situation and cause there to be a, 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 a conflict that, that, that erupts into a full-blown war, then yeah, separate yourself. But, you know, understand and know that that's not Yahweh's intent, okay? Yahweh's intent is even when you separate, the reason why you separate is to eventually be brought back together, okay? The reason why you separate. If you get to a point to where you need to separate, you can't handle it anymore, know to yourself that that's not the end-all, be-all. This is how it's going to be. No, you separate in order that you can regain your faculties, okay? Think about what had just occurred and think about how, how, how important it is to stand your ground or to let the situation be, you know? And then, you, you, you know, also to think about Father Yahweh. I mean, oftentimes when we retaliate against our brother, Guarantee you, you're not thinking about Yahweh. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. When we want to snap back and we want to say something back and, you know, exact revenge, you're not thinking about Yahweh. You weren't thinking about Yahweh when you told your brother, well, yeah, what about you? You weren't thinking about Yahweh. That's not how Yahweh operates. Okay, so we're going to pick up on... Um, on page 137, as a matter of fact, let's turn over to uh, Isaiah chapter 14 before we do that. Let's go over to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, because, you know, pastor goes over this particular, particular point here, and he was showing that this is what the adversary does, you know, and she, she, she feels that she is oh so right, because... What she has in her mind, you know, when she stood up against, against Yahweh, her head, and was willing to buck up against his instruction, 
it felt oh so good to her. And all her buddies and all her friends, all her girlfriends were telling her, you go, girl. You tell him. Don't let him tell you what to do. I mean, if you remember what occurred to Queen Vashti when she did the exact same thing. And then King Xerxes, King Xerxes, his boys, his, his, uh, his, the, the guys in his court, they were like, look, you got to do something about this. Okay, because we got to go home to our wives too. When they hear about that craziness that she's doing, we don't want to have to deal with this at home too. Do something about it, please. They begged him on bended knees, please do something about this. And the whole, the whole region knew his decision, and that was to put away Vashti. And in that one moment of making that wrong choice, she never saw the king after that. You know, so we, we also are under that same, that same, for all of us who are called into the house of Yahweh, we're under a stricter judgment, period, point blank. And it doesn't matter what we're experiencing, what we're going through. Yes, just like the great priest said, we're going to stumble, we're going to fall, we're going to make mistakes. But it's necessary for us to pick ourselves up. Okay? We're going to stumble, we're going to fall, we're going to make mistakes. But it's necessary to pick yourself up. Humility will give you the strength to be able to see where you went wrong, or it'll also give you the strength that when somebody points out where you went wrong, you're able to say, yeah, I went wrong. That's what humility will do, the power of humility. But you see, the adversary didn't, didn't have that humility, okay? Um, Let's start off in verse 11. So it's Isaiah 14 and verse 11. It says, your pomp, speaking of the adversary, your pomp, which is your pride that you held so firmly and you loved so much, has brought you down to the grave. That retaliation, it felt so good at the moment. And that it, it is godly. Okay, but that's what exactly what this, what Satan um, uh, deceives us with. You felt like you had to say something, so you just you had to get it off your chest, and you blurt out a whole bunch of words that feel oh so good. But the end thereof is exactly what he says here: your pomp, which is your pride, has brought you down to the grave with the sound of your harps. Um, the worm, the maggot, is spreading under you. Even though you're playing this wonderful, it looks so great and looks so wonderful. It glitters and it shines and it sparkles, but the maggots are spread under you. And the worm, the worms cover you. Okay, so when we fall, we need to get back up. But look what 12 says about the adversary Lucifer. Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, O oh, Hillel, Lucifer, Aphrodite, Venus, child of the light. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. Okay, she was the one who weakened the nations through her rebellion against, against Father Yahweh. Okay, and the way that she weakened the nations, she didn't say to the nations, come and be weak with me. She said, come and be strong with me. American pride, the American pomp. Come and be this magnificent nation where everybody looks, looks up to and we look down to everybody else. Yeah, we don't have to learn about nobody else, but they all learn about us. The great U.S. of A. <clears throat> okay? But that same nation, the great U.S. of A, has been weakened by the adversary. Okay, it has been weakened by the adversary. 13, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend above the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of Yahweh. Since the very beginning, she went after the stars. She didn't go after Adam, she went after Eve. Because she knew that the stars have the ability to completely decimate the household of the man. 
So if she could get after the stars, the whole galaxy collapses. I will sit in the highest place in the holy mountain of the congregation. Okay, so she, she, hasn't, she, she doesn't want to run away from Yahweh's congregation. No, she wants to dwell right there, just stirring stuff up. Okay, just stirring up calamity, discord, disunity. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Okay, I am woman, hear me roar. Just like a prowling lion. I mean, we could turn it right back on her. Hear me roar, just like a prowling lion seeking who I may devour. Okay? But what pastor, pastor is pointing out in all of these verses, that character, that particular character that the adversary had. Let's start off, and we're going to start off in, in um, uh, verse 40 on page 137. It says, on the holy mountain of the congregations, well, in the last days, in the last days, I will establish my house in the mountain of the house, uh, sorry, uh, I will establish my house, the mountain of the house of Yahweh. If you'll just look, it takes about the same, it, it talks about the same thing, the mountain of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights. Because if you remember, she also fought for the body of Moshe. Okay, she wanted rulership over the body of Moshe. And she hasn't given up that. Because our Moshe in these last days is Yisra Hawkins, who established the house of Yahweh, the great body of Messiah. And she still wants to rule over the body of Messiah till this very day. And that thus all the contention, all the strife, and if she could cause us to fail, then she wins. But we know that Yahweh won't allow that to occur. Verse 41. I will ascend above the heights. Now she's trying this right now. Revelation shows how she actually tries to make war against you. That's you training here for the position that Yahweh prophesied you will have very, very soon. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. 15. Yet you will be brought down to Sheol, the grave, to the side of the pit. Not because Yahweh's, you know, going to hit her with a leg sweep and, you know, send her to the very edge of the Sheol, the grave. No. But by her own devices, by her own means, by her own thought patterns, because the thought pattern of pride doesn't promote, you know, even the, for the brain to be able to think properly, pride is a, is, is a, a, a hindrance to the thought processes. Okay, you have to have peace in your mind in order for creativity to flow, for it, you know, in order for new ideas to come in and all of these different things. But when there's anger, anger is a type of stress. Pride is a type of stress. Okay, it puts a stress on the brain. And once you have that pride, once you have that arrogance, you're not getting the full potential out of your own brain. But you think, we think that it's empowering. But it's actually the very destruction that will bring us to the sides of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and they will talk about you, saying, Is this the one, the adversary who shook the earth? Shook the earth, Isaiah said. It's going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. This very, um, it says, uh, this is verse 16. Is this the one? Are you the one who shook the earth? Wow. And here you lay dead. The exact same one with the power to shake the earth. And she's laying dead. You know, if you look, if you look at it, all of these wonderful thinkers and all of these wonderful individuals who supposedly had the secret to all understanding and wisdom, and they're all dead. Like Buddha. Buddha is dead. Buddha was just a nice guy. You know, if you look at Buddha, all he was was a nice guy. They felt as though he had moral standing. He was just a mor he, they felt as though he was a moral individual. You know? 
And in the land of robbers, killers, murderers, and thieves, the moral man is king. So they put Buddha up on a, on a, on a pedestal and said, we're going to worship this guy because he's such a nice guy. He got a moral character. I can trust him. I can't trust any other one of you individuals out here, but I could trust Buddha. That's the reason why they put Buddha up as a god. Okay? But he's not alive today. You know, Buddha's not alive today. Yahweh's given us the opportunity to live through this time period into Yahweh's kingdom and have that eternal life. Even those who are resting right now with their fathers who have been called out into the house of Yahweh and are resting, they will be called to eternal life. Okay, but right here we see that the adversary is going to be laying there dead and all people are going to see and look and be like, wow, that was the one right there. You know, I didn't have to listen to her, but it just felt so good. I didn't have to retaliate, but it just felt so good. You know, I didn't have to be disobedient, but man, I just couldn't get the urge out. And, you know, all of these points we have to remember. Okay, she's the same one that caused the earth to shake, that shook the earth and made kingdoms tre- tremble. Is this the one who made the world like a wilderness? Okay, like brute beasts. Men became like brute beasts, just devouring each other for their own survival, okay, for their own gain, for their own supposed gain. But it's so amazing how, you know, you can eat a pork chop and then the pork chop starts eating you from within. You know? I mean, but it tasted so good. Yeah, it tasted very godly. Do you, it, just like what Pastor said, if you look at, at mankind today, they're addicted to pork. You start trying to tell some people, look, get away from the pork. They will look at you like you had three heads on and, and your nose was shining orange. Okay? To get rid of pork, they will fight for their pork. Okay, let's go over to verse 40, uh, 47. This is what's being prepared. Prepare slaughter for her children. This is slaughter. This is the slaughter Daniel talks about. Prepare slaughter for her children because of the iniquity of their fathers. Okay? Prepare slaughter because of the iniquity of their fathers. They did not repent of the sins of their fathers. So now they're going to fall into the same condemnation. Verse 48. Yahweh shows in verse 24... Yahweh, our Father, has vowed, saying, Just as surely as I have planned. Planned in the beginning was the plan. And we now see it taking, it taking shape. We see nucle- the nuclear bomb here. We see planes and missiles that carry them are here. This is the purpose. Okay? It says uh, in verse 26, this is the purpose or the plan. That is the purpose upon the whole earth. Why? To teach mankind what sin brings. To teach his children here um, to hate sin. And that hatred for the sin is going to be a decision. It's not a feeling. Okay? It's not going to be a feeling first. Eventually, yes, we have to place our love on the things of Yahweh, and our emotions have to be closely tied to the keeping of Yahweh's law. Okay, but at this point, because of the hardness of our hearts and the stubbornness, we have, to know, we have to choose the right thing. We have to stop, think, consider our options, and proceed with the right choice. Not the choice that you feel like. Okay, the choice that, you know, we feel like doing? No, you're going to choose the wrong thing. Okay, but we have to stop, think, and proceed with the choice that will bring peace. Okay? Let's go over to page 138 and pick up on, on uh, verse 57. Okay, because we're still talking about this slaughter. It says, but the judgment will sit and they will take away this government. It's actually going to collapse due to their efforts, the Catholic, Church, the Catholic Church's efforts, who turned against Yahweh's laws. It's going to collapse upon them. They're going to destroy their own government, 
Okay? We don't have to lift a finger. All we have to do is be that, that, that thorn in their flesh, okay? Be that, that chicken that continues to peck at the, at, the, at the foot of the mountain and overcome within ourselves to consume and to destroy them completely. Pastor says in verse 58, now that, now that, verse 26, the King James Version, the only difference here, but I do want you to know the difference because it can be translated either way. They're at the last, uh, sorry, um, they're at the last, it says, the governments, to consume and destroy them completely. The King James Version says, consume and destroy them unto the end. Okay, but that end was, just for better understanding, is a complete destruction. Unto the end. Well, if you think about it, either way, but unto the end. The end that he's talking about here is what Yahshua talked about, this last generation. When you see the end of man's government, of the people and by the people, we have a government that we are proudly proclaiming is a government of the people and by the people. Of course, every other nation does too. You know that because Russia continually says we have nothing, no problem with democracy. It's just the type of democracy that you have, we don't want. Okay, so pastor is right here when he says every other nation says that they are for the people, a government of the people and by the people also. It's of and by the people, but it won't be that way ever again. Okay? No government's of and by the people. It's going to be a government of Yahweh for the people. Okay? A government of Yahweh and for the benefit and the, 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 the um, strengthening and the guidance and direction of the people. We have, to, we have to make sure to be part of that government, and part of that um, uh, government is what's going to lead us away from stealing uh, the integrity of individuals, okay, gossiping against one another, showing hatred in that manner. You know, the example that we, we see among the rulers of the land is when one wants to campaign for his own gain to get into an office— Okay, that he says he's doing it for the people, but he's actually doing it for himself. And if he has any opposition, he's going to seek to completely decimate that opposition by ridiculing, propaganda, you know, stirring up hatred against them by gossip, false uh, uh, testimonies. You know, all of these things will be used. And even if, you know, in, uh, just as in the, in the courts of law, you know, you see that, um, a, a lawyer may, may say something knowing that there's going to be an objection, okay, because it's against, against you know, proper etiquette in, in the courts of law. But knowing there's going to be an objection, but just for the simple fact of getting what he said into the mind of the jury, he's going to say it anyway because he knows how inf influential um, people are. Okay, so he'll say it. He'll get the objection from the other side. The, the uh, judge will sustain the objection, but it's already in the mind of the, the jury. Okay? So this is what Yahweh is striving to cause us to, to, to not be part of this system that will be destroyed of its own self. Okay, let's go over to verse 62. Okay, speaking of the word consume, it says, uh, well... Let me go back up to consume. This word consume now, keep, in, keep this in mind. You can mark your place or you can come uh, hold your finger in it. But Isaiah, go back to Isaiah 66 and remember the word consume. There that you saw in Daniel, the word consume. They'll be consumed to the end. Daniel 7 and 26 in the book of Yahweh says, consumed or destroy it completely. But there's a time limit, 
of this destruction because there won't be destruction forever. They're learning war no more. That's our job. We will keep it that way, and we will protect it and keep the people in a peaceful situation of serving one another, okay? A government of Yahweh and for the people. Verse 64, you can't. You can't get angry with that. There's no way you can get angry with that. They'll be friends, you know. If you got a wife who's uh, also a friend, you got a real wife. If you got a brother, a brother who is a friend, you know that's a true friend. Or your dad, you got a friend, um, uh, you got a father who is a friend to you. I remember this. I remember the difference. I was uh, impressed. I saw the difference in my father and those uh, of the fathers of the other children. (coughs) Excuse me. It was more or less, you know, the fathers of the other children, um, they was more or less, you know, get them out of my hair. Uh, Get them raised and get them out of here. But with dad... It was totally a totally different thing, okay? And, you know, you, you see that how much Pastor really loves, loves his father for that. You know, he went on to speak about how his father, you know, he would take him, you know, and, and do projects with him. You know, and of course, he taught him two wrongs do not make a right, okay? But remember, he went over to Isaiah 66, and so we'll pick up on verse 69, on page 140, it says, the word consume, because that ties you in then with a person, a religion that's bringing this about when you go back to Isaiah 66 and verse 17. They who sanctify themselves, not who are sanctified by Yahweh, but sanctify themselves. And you read with me. They who sanctify themselves and purify themselves If you remember, Moshe said in Exodus 20 and chapter 31, Exodus 31, he said, keep the Sabbath day holy because this would sanctify you. This Sabbath day would sanctify you. And it would prove that you are willing to learn to have peace and to teach peace. Okay, the Sabbath day um, shows us you know, that we will not steal. It teaches us how not to steal. Okay, that's one of the things that we have to keep in mind. Yahweh sets apart the holy, uh, for a holy use when you keep the Sabbath day, okay? So he sets us apart for a holy use when we keep the Sabbath day. It means we're in agreement with him. The keeping of the Sabbath day means that we are in agreement with Yahweh. And so keep these things in mind. And be strengthened by them. And allow these things to be in your mind and in your heart when you're dealing with your brothers. Because we come on the Sabbath day so that we can learn how to conduct ourselves the next six days. Right? Then we come back on the Sabbath day. How did you do? Oh, well, I failed here and there and I failed here and there. Can you please forgive me, great priest? Yes, we forgive you. Can you reconcile me to Yahweh? Yes, we will. And we'll go ahead and continue to learn how to conduct ourselves the next six days of the week, for the next six days of the week. Praise Yahweh. If you don't.